Hi all, this is Dan with DPS Breakdowns. This video will be the first in a series exploring the underhook system of 2019 world medalist Yoena Zemami from Iran. In this first part, I'll provide a high level overview of the system with subsequent videos in the series taking a closer look at the finer details of the techniques used. Here's an overview of the Imami underhook system. At a high level, you can see Imami has at least five options once he obtains his underhook. We'll call these the primary options. One primary option is to use his strong positioning to push his opponent out of bounds. In freestyle wrestling, forcing your opponent out of bounds, otherwise known as a push out, can result in one point. Importantly, the mere threat of a push out can cause opponents to drive in, which can help set up some of the other offensive options. Another primary option is the throw by. Depending on the opponent's stance and reaction, Imami has at least three finishes off his throw by. The first, and probably the ideal finish in terms of efficiency, is a simple go behind. For all of his throw by finishes, Imami pivots his head, torso, and hips hard to his right, opposite the underhook side, and takes a big step forward with his left leg. If the force generated from this contortion forces the opponent to post both of his hands to the mat, the go behind finish becomes a great option. Second finishing option off the throw by is a near side single leg. When the go behind isn't available, Imami will sometimes look to shelve the opponent's near foot on his right hip. This shelving method allows Imami to maintain elevation of the opponent's leg without needing to use his hands. With both hands free, he can keep his underhook and use his free hand as a post to maintain height and balance. The third finishing option off the throw by is a far side leg scoop. For this one, Amami hooks his free hand underneath the opponent's far thigh, giving him control of both sides of the opponent's body. Here you can see Amami initially go for the near side single leg before transitioning to the far side leg scoop. Beyond these three throw by finishes, Imami can also transition from a throw by to a body lock, which of course has its own separate finishes, which we'll see a bit later. The third primary option is the transition to a front headlock. In the front headlock position, Imami uses his chest to trap the opponent's head underneath him while maintaining the underhook. Two common ways to get to this position are when defending an opponent's shot and off a snap down. Once here, Amami makes good use of his whip over technique, also known as Rakabi. Similar to the throw by, Amami generates power for his whip over by pivoting his head, torso, and hips hard to his right, away from the underhook side. This strong pivot, combined with upper body torque created from the underhook and far tricep control, force the opponent towards their far hip and sometimes onto their back. It's worth pointing out that a good system feeds into other systems or subsystems. To keep things a bit more simple, we're only covering Imami's whip over from the front headlock position. But you could just as easily plug in an entire detailed front headlock system here. The fourth primary option is to get to the body lock position. Like the front headlock position, the body lock could serve as its own standalone system. But for our purposes, Imami has at least two preferred finishes from here. The first finish from the body lock is to force a go behind, which Imami does by shifting his body lock down towards the opponent's waist and running his hips directly behind the opponent's hips. This motion puts stress on the opponent's overhooking shoulder and forces them to concede the go behind. Another finishing option Imami uses off the body lock is to hip in and lift the opponent for a high impact throw. A fifth primary option is the whip over. We saw this finish used from the front headlock position, but Amami also uses it from a more traditional standing underhook position. Again, pay attention to how Amami cuts an angle and pivots hard to his right opposite the underhook side while pulling inward on the opponent's far arm to generate upper body torque. As we wrap up this first part, there are two things that I hope you were able to take away from this video. The first is some insight into what a high level underhook system looks like on a macro level. 
The second is to get you thinking about how you can start building your own systems, tailored to your technique preferences, attributes, and style. Stay tuned for the next part in the series.